Folks, welcome to San Francisco here at Groove Merchant Records with, uh, I mean, he's already a legendary cat in my book because uh, of the people that he's collaborated with. Danny Avens, welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show. Thanks for having me. How in the heck did you know or run into Jason Abraham Roberts? Jason Abraham Roberts, I was a high schooler, um, really wanting to learn more about bass. I was like super, super, super amateur um, and just searched on craigslist for base teachers in southern california uh so i'm from marin county from the bay area yeah. he was based in uh, southern california and we're like that's actually how i found out about zoom because he was like hey i do lessons you know via like zoom like we can do it i'm in la and we'll just do it you know over the computer well how did you um, how did you choose him i mean he is the most yeah. cosmic musician on the planet There's yeah nobody well, more so when i was in high school maybe I josh was, adams <laughs> true um yeah i was i was like a huge, huge fish fan in high school. Right. So he his ad on Craigslist literally literally said, you know, I teach guitar and bass for people who like like the dead or fish. Sure. Um, and sure. I was like, yeah, that sounds awesome. So I did. So that and when what does that mean to you? I mean, Mike Gordon and Phil Lesh, mm -hmm. they are not jazzers, but they play around the one, the downbeat. Mm -hmm. You know, they it's, yeah. it, it's it's they play as melodically as they can. I mean, yeah. So. Talk a little bit about what he was like as a teacher. I mean, did yeah. you get a chance to do in person or was it only over Zoom? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we've definitely, you know, hung out in person and been able to play a couple times, mostly over Zoom and, you know, um, just like over the computer. But, um, I mean, we studied, you know, a lot of like Phil and Mike's stuff, just like, you know, really getting, trying to get into the weeds of it. Um, you got in the weeds with Lesh. I mean, the dude, <laughs> yeah. the, I mean, he didn't want a dad, he didn't want the, he didn't want a backbeat. No, and I think like something important too about Phil um, is just like his sense of like, you know, kind of like straying from, you know, whatever the groove is and like kind of leading the band, um, totally. which I, I found really cool. Um, and like, I, I think it was like his classical music training really would like, I, I feel like he actually like carried the band melodically um, in some of the lists. Uh, I think he doesn't get enough credit to. for being yeah. uh, the most... Uh, in terms of ideas and also just, i mean yeah. they're all such like amazing musicians in and of themselves right. but phil is really just like this kind of like uh i don't even know how to describe well, no, it he, just I like mean, there's a great interview musician. with Garcia where he was just like you know he went in and there were just uh, cl uh classical charts yeah phil would just write out yeah all of it by ear. yeah i mean he was a composer you know up until he started becoming a hippie in the early the 60s post, and stuff work for the post office so yeah. i mean talk about why because it's funny i've only I know Jason as the most like ridiculous guitar player. Yeah, he is, and he's nuts. not even like it's it's. He reminds me of Garcia in the yeah. sense that he can all he seems to always be telling stories, which is a lost art. I don't care about riffology. Yeah, I care about soul. Yeah, and Jason has a lot of that. And Jason, like clearly, he's just like probably the most positive person I've met in like all the people I've met through music. Jason cut above the rest, and he's performed with like such an insane cast of people and he has every right to be like super cocky but he's not he's just the most humble laid back dude um and like you know he used to be like Nora jones's guitarist sure. um you know playing with his cousin fishman all that um and he's still just like he, he gets he's a spark plug yeah and he, he would get so excited um when i would like show him new stuff that i wanted to learn and like i remember trying to learn this latin funk song with him like a few years ago by this band called black sugar and it was like the whole you know the time signature was just like a little different it, the, the whole rhythm is mm -hmm. different than like american bass you know kind of like north american bass music um and he was just like he was having a hard time getting it and he was getting like so excited because it was like something new for it's him a challenge too. for him yeah and like it was, it's fun to like you know do that with him um and like when he finally would get it and then like teach me how to do it he'd be like oh dude dude, dude i got it i got it and then so he's just like the most positive dude and like you know myself um the people i've met through him because i got to jam with a lot of like his other students and like my family everyone just loves jason he's he's the best i mean this uh, which cats in this town are you did you get connected to for three so years? uh Connor Gleason. Dude, he, um, dude, Last Grey Wolf. We're doing yeah. an interview in about two hours. Dude. Oh, nice. I mean, dude, this tell, is so tripped out. No, you're coming with me, dude. <laughs> like, tell this Connor, is so tripped out, man. Tell Connor I say what's up. I was at his show, like, what was it, like a month ago? Um, dude, the reason it's special tonight, Dan Horn on bass. Yeah. For Last, for Which, last like, Grey. So, 
Jason, I don't know if any more, but Jason and Dan were, you know, across the street neighbors. Um, and I know that they would jam together all the time. And like Jason would always, you know, hop on the lesson and be like, yeah, I was just playing with Dan. Super fun. And like, I think he would try and teach me a lot of things that he would pick up from Dan's bass playing. Because right. Dan, I mean, obviously like studied the Phil Lush school. I, mean, I don't even know. I did, um, he's a freak. Yeah, he's, he's just insane. A total he's freak. so good. Um, so yeah, Connor Gleason. Um, and then like through Connor, uh, played with like a few a few people like we played a show for a singer songwriter named Nate Boudreaux. Um, oh, I, th I think I I think I've interviewed that cat maybe. Where did you play? We played at Amato's um, on Valencia, twenty second in Valencia. Um, and I'm trying to think, uh, I also uh, I played with a cat named Mikey Weinstein. Um, you know he's a big Jake Feinberg show fan, but <laughs> this is so the, this concentric circles of life. Yeah. It's a small city when you get there. Dude, I just it. walked in from Tuesday. I mean, I just walked <laughs> yeah, in no, from yeah, San Jose. in the right place. Um, uh, before I let you go, yeah. uh, tell me about, because I mean, there's no, this house band show that I'm <clears throat> putting on, mm -hmm. I mean, it's Pat Kelly on bass. Yeah, Pat's uh, a monster. Who's a monster. Oh, uh, so Andrew good. McGuire on percussion. Yeah, who's I just love a sweet, Andrew's amazing, badass man. drummer. Great. I mean, obviously, Jason's going to the heavens. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Harding, Fish on Film, yeah, and then um, and then Josh Adams. Uh, clearly, uh, what makes him such a special drummer? Man, Josh. So Josh, like, and I will talk or like you know text you know for like hours just about like records and like obscure music from like the sixties and seventies. And he's like, I he has told Jason and he's mentioned to me like kind of that Earl Palmer is his like big, big guy. And that's like David Axelrod's drummer um, during like those like psychedelic funk Dude, years. Earl Palmer, man. Um, I mean, yeah, and, and I like, I really hear the like, you know, songs of experience and innocence kind of influence when I hear Jason or uh, Josh play. You know, I, and, and Earth Rot, that incredible, yeah, I think totally. Palmer was on that. Yep, yeah, yeah. Um, what is that, is, it's a more of a New Orleans kind of vibe? Yeah, it's like a, it's just like kind of more psych funk um golf than, coast funk yeah. yeah and like i think you know earl palmer uh came from a little more of like a jazzy background and like they did this kind of more like cosmic psychedelic jazz funk thing that was just like insane and i mean like we even have like i think the david axelrod sound is like a lot of what we like to bring into the shop here at crew merchant i mean i interviewed here, david i gotta send you that interview yeah it's one of the most he's cosmic a, interviews i've he's ever the done man. he is a I mean, rest in peace i mean yeah. he, and, and and a no bullshit guy yeah no i mean definitely that uh you know who gave hal blaine his his entrance into being uh into the studio scene yeah like earl palmer yeah yeah um yeah i mean if not have you played with josh or you just talk music no i haven't played with josh um i would love to we just you know I, I come to shows whenever they're up here and then we just you know rap in the back room and just talk about all the records we've been picking up recently danny avens <laughs> i'm gonna wait outside the store for you and we're going to the show tonight <laughs> <laughs> right on dude how far is kilowatt from here um oh man it's not okay i think anyway it doesn't matter the, the point yeah. is i really I, you have to realize i know you're just getting i mean you, you you're hip to my show but this is cosmic. So it would be an honor to see you tonight. Um, and not to mention the fact that you're so tight with Jason anyway. Yeah. And Connor. Yeah, uh, totally. It's a big deal. So yeah, I'm glad I got to meet you in person. I've heard a lot of, or I've, I've listened to the show and it's, it's cool to make the face yeah, to face man. connection with you. Yeah. Dude. Jake Feinberg show. Yeah. Danny Avens <laughs> connected to the heavens. We'll see you later. Right on. It's the Jake Feinberg show. Peace.